Well, good morning, Wellhouse Church. How are you? Uh, I hope you're enjoying a beautiful uh, Sunday. I'm out here in a lovely uh, outside space with a cup of coffee and looking at our text for this morning. And I feel like it's uh, worth the conversation, at least. You know, we've been following Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul, on this journey of his imprisonment, of the Jews, the his ethnic, ethnic uh, community, and his religious community are battling against him for his belief in Jesus and the way that fits into Judaism. And it has gotten caught up into a political battle at this point. And Paul has chosen to navigate those waters by going to see the emperor uh, in Rome. And he's just arrived. We've been following for following him for several chapters now through this journey and the trial setting. And when he arrives in Rome, through all of this nonsense, he has arisen in a place where the Jewish community is a valuable uh, subset of society of the Roman Empire. And so the Jews in Rome are a force to be reckoned with, as you might say. And so... The Jews in Jerusalem are always the ones that run the show. But the next closest might be the ones in Rome. That also explains why Paul's letter to the Romans is one of his most detailed theological works. And so when Paul arrives at Rome, he's still waiting on his trial before the emperor. And he decides that he thinks it's a good idea for him to try to navigate these waters with a conversation. Now, what he says is important, um, and we're going to spend the next couple of weeks looking at what he says. So if you want a deeper look at what he says, make sure you tune in to tomorrow's episode of A Closer Look. Um, but Paul begins to speak. That's He chooses to use his words and have a conversation a very respectful conversation. I think that's a valuable lesson for us. I think often we choose to fight our battles with no words at all or the wrong type of words, not enough respect in our conversations, not enough listening in our conversations. Paul arrives in Rome and in verse 17 it tells us, that three days after he arrives, he gets together the local leaders of the Jews in Rome so that he can have this conversation with them. And he begins to tell his story. I haven't done anything wrong. The Jews in Jerusalem brought charges against me. The Romans didn't think they were any real charges. And so in order for them not to continue to pursue me, and remember they were plotting to kill him, he says, I wanted to speak to you. I wanted to have a conversation. Having that conversation and beginning that conversation is important. Because here's what they say. You know, he could have went into that conversation expecting the worst. He could have went into that conversation thinking they'd already plotted against them, that they'd already reached the Jews in Rome with their version of the story. He could have come in there combative and defensive, his demeanor could have been a lot of different things in the way he approached this conversation. He chose not to. And so he tells his story and says, because of all this, because they don't really have any real charges against me or any of this, and now I'm here for this trial with the emperor, I wanted to have a conversation with you. Verse 20, for this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. Paul's making a decision based on hope. He thinks he's on trial for belief in the resurrection of Jesus and the hope that that brings. Paul thinks he's on trial for a conversation about hope, something in the future. And they respond, we haven't received any letters from Judea about you, um, but we'd like to hear what you have to say. We want to hear what you think. Um, 
and why it's been spoken against you. As I racked my brain with what I might want to say about this today, I couldn't help but think that election day is on Tuesday, in two days. On November 8th, there will be midterm elections. Um, there will be local elections. There will be a lot of people voting and having conversations on two sides of an aisle, two sides of a coin. And if I had to guess, I would say that every person that exercises their right to vote in America votes for what they think gives them and America the most hope. They vote for hope. And what happens oftentimes is when you vote for hope and you don't see it or another person doesn't see that same hope, it very easily gets combative. And we, we begin talking circles around one another. And here's what I want you to realize. Hope and the need for hope is rooted in fear. We need hope to combat the things we're afraid of. And so people are afraid of different things. People think the solution to those things are different. And so hope is the way they do that. And I might challenge us with two things. Number one, I'm not telling you not to vote. I've already voted. I did early voting. Please go vote. But I do think that our hope should not be in politics. Paul is in a battle of a political game. Paul is a pawn in a political game right now. And I think it's very clear. Our hope should not be in politics. Our hope should be in Jesus. And our politics should reflect the way we view Jesus. We should vote our convictions about Jesus. Um, but the other thing and the more pertinent thing is when we call ourselves Christians, when we call ourselves people of faith, I think we need to represent Jesus well. Um, and I think Paul has done an excellent job of imitating what I think Jesus would do in these situations. And that's having some respectful conversations approaching things with respect, listening, willing to have a conversation and learn, being open-minded when we approach these conversations. Clayton and I did an entire series on our Let's Talk podcast, our Faith and Culture uh, podcast about respectful conversations, uh, if you want to learn more about how we think about that. But that is my question for us today is, how do we approach these moments of defense or these moments of trial or these moments of combative conversations around fear in this election season, how do we represent Christ well with respectful conversations?